This is exactly right. favorite murder. That's Georgia Hardstar. That's Karen Kilgariff. We're here to tell you some things. Some things, some thoughts, some feelings. You know what we're going to do? We're going to podcast at you. Absolutely. That's what podcasting is. Some doubts, some epiphanies. Some TV viewing, (laughs) some observations out our front windows. Do you know what I was just doing? Speaking of front windows, I just did something I don't, I've done maybe a handful of times during quarantine. Can I guess? Okay. Did you do a, like a leg show in the window for your neighbors? <laughs> kind of. I <laughs> okay. danced. I danced. <gasps> really? Look, tell us why. Tell us how. I, I don't know. I, had... I was hoping you'd dance. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. I put on, I never put on music. It's always a book or a podcast. I put on, I had just had therapy and it felt freeing. And I put on Bell and Sebastian just nice. to listen to a little, which I never do. And it's so poppy and fun. And I love it so much that I just started Can I dancing. Guess? Yeah. Can I guess the song? Yeah. Or album. Boy with the Arab Strap. No, but they all no. sound, they all sound fun like that. So Tiger Milk. Tiger Milk. I just started dancing and Cookie was like, what are you? Cookie's never seen me dance before. So she was a little confused, but then I went on my balcony and for the whole world to see, I just started dancing. So yeah, there was a little leg show. Nice. And it felt so good. I think everyone should try it in the privacy <laughs> of your own home, of your own room alone. And then the public of your own balcony. That's right. Pretend like act, dance like no one's watching. But then there were a helicopter went by, of course. So I was like, what's up? <laughs> the cops. <laughs> the cops, it was man. It just like fun and freeing and felt and was weird and lovely. I really like that idea because I think there are real there's real science behind the idea of when you you process something and then you move your body yeah and it actually helps you physiologically process it whatever definitely you might have been talking about mm-hmm. well my ther- might have been an instinct that told yes you that. and my therapist says there's this thing called pony sweat that's like a lead but <laughs> casual fun great music do be yourself um dance like zoom and it's mm-hmm. just like really open to all kinds of people. And she's always telling me to do it. And I need to. But, you know, I feel I feel weird and I'm the weird one. So I never do it. But it definitely like boosts your mood. It's a serotonin fucking boost. I wonder if that's the kind of thing I find that with streaming things, you can go on there with your camera off and do whatever you want. Totally. You can truly sit and judge all of Pony Sweat <laughs> as they do it. And then you're like, I'll decide. Yeah. And then you it. see everyone having fun and you're like, <clears throat> I want them. I want to convey fun, too, with them because there's no judgment, you know. And also the idea of I'm the one that's weird is just is the idea every person has. That's right. what every single person thinks. Right. I love that idea. I've actually heard I know a lot of the people that do pony sweat Mm -hmm. and have been like pony sweat, the OG pony sweaters. And it's all the people that, you know, and love that are like, who gives a shit? Yeah. They wear cool clothes, but they're not trying to be cool. They're just like effortlessly cool. They're trying to kind of dance away the onus of having to be cool yeah and that like body i think there's a lot of like body dysmorphia like breaking those walls down and come as you are and you know it's it's kind of lovely and i want to be part you of don't that. have to tape your breasts down <laughs> if you go to pony sweat you don't have to for the first yeah. time ever dress silly and fun and i know people wear like wigs and <laughs> that's the know. hottest thing you could do it is the ponies. sweatiest <laughs> pony per- that you could possibly pony <laughs> But maybe that's the point. Maybe there, that's it's the like point. it's wig hot yoga, <laughs> but da- but with kooky music. Yeah, come on. Yeah, it reminds me of it's like a the kind of thing that for me as a highly damaged Gen Xer from the <laughs> evil nineties, uh-huh. I watch the children do things like pony sweat, and I say thank God and good for you. And I I am not allowed to do that. No, you are. I am, I am not. No, you, you didn't hear. Um, <laughs> 
I was called. <laughs> I was called there's by a, the band. There's a stamp. The band pavement called me and said, "You're not allowed to." <laughs> You'll be embarrassing your yourself. entire generation if you yeah. do that. But maybe if your generation had had the had been allowed to do it, you know, it would have been. You know you, what it you is. You guys would need less therapy. Entirely. Well, it's in our generation. The option was do what everyone else is doing or be on heroin. <laughs> and it was hard to choose. Sure. Those are um, great choices. Both of them. The, I mean, they're very specific choices <laughs> and they definitely guide you down a certain path. Yeah. I feel like the freedom of pony sweat and the those kind of high concept like gals and guys, we're going to exercise, but not exercise. Guys, and gals and wear your purple sweats. Be yourself. Be yeah. your true self. Where it's like my whole life. Everyone was saying, could you please stop being yourself for four minutes? <laughs> your style is embarrassing. Down. Squash. It's too loud. <laughs> the ideas are too out there. Shut up. Yeah. I'm uh, so are you going to do it or did you already do it or you had your own personal pony? I had my own personal and it almost felt like a like a way to like introduce myself to group dancing (laughs) solo (laughs) to group. (laughs) And then who knows from there could go anywhere. Then you sign up for Pony Sweat, but right as it starts, you go, excuse me, everyone, could you all mute your microphones? I'm going (laughs) to. Well, then (laughs) I'd like to introduce myself. That's a Janet move. He said what Janet would do. Every, everyone. No, she just like always <laughs> wants to make a speech, you know? <laughs> Hello, ding, 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 ding. Like she's <laughs> no. dinging on the side right, of the thing. <sighs> on the side of her like water, plastic water bottle at Pony Sweat. Yeah. Ding, 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 everybody. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> oh, I'm being mean, but that's just her personality. <laughs> and that's why I don't have that personality. <laughs> it's the whole like, it's the it's the mindset from that I have that I can't do of when she'd pull up to pick us up from somewhere, have complete eye contact with us and still this is her thing. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> no, that what was it? Shaving a haircut. Every time she'd pick <laughs> us up from somewhere. And now as an adult, I know she was embarrassing us on purpose because we deserved it. Yeah. And I know parents are so sick of their kids that anytime they can get a little win in, they'll take it. <laughs> but at the time I was like, why are you ruining my life? I'm dying over here. Yeah. Why don't you care? Why is it so funny to you that I'm in <laughs> such intense, constant pain? I already am a fucking nerd and I'm not <laughs> one of the popular girls. So if you couldn't make it not guess double time. Guess what you're not helping me yeah, with? The Popularity. Two, the two Elizabeths and the Jennifers and the Megans <laughs> who have normal names and don't get fu- made fun of because their names <laughs> are who are popular. Their moms aren't beep, 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 their moms send a hired car. That's right. Why can't you love me the way Jennifer and Jennifer's mother loves them? Elizabeth with an S and Elizabeth with a Z. <laughs> Never have to deal with this bullshit. Okay. Elizabeth with an S seems like the highest of maintenance. I don't. It, it, uh, did she make people call her Elspeth? What's why Elspeth. did it have to be like that? Uh, Elspeth? That's what Els- I would have called her. Elspeth. 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 Speaking of Dutch, my, my dad, yeah. um, did I ever tell you about the time he had a white, a 1970 white Ford truck uh-huh. Ooh. that he bought? Cool. Um, not, I was going to say bucket <clears throat> bench front seat. Yeah. Literally would fit like six kids in the front seat to no, drive us all to school. No seatbelts. No, I don't think they were in there at all. No. And he, on the way to school one day, the horn started honking by itself. Oh. And, we were, and we were like, dad, no, 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 dad, 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 dad. And he's like, well, there's nothing I can do. And it was, oh. he was elated. He was overjoyed where we're like, do not pull in, dad, oh. don't pull in. And he's like, I, girls, I got to make sure you get into the building. I'm and we were like sweating. crying and begging him not to do it. And he pulled right up to the front and stayed there. With the like, as if he was laying uh, on the horn, so every so no person one knew. standing outside of school, uh, it's just like, oh, oh. I might need to get off of this podcast for a little while. <laughs> oh, was that too much for you? This is triggering me <laughs> hard. Uh, yeah, there's so much shame. There's like a like a fountain of shame at the front of every school when you're you're just trying to walk into school. Totally, and there's so many ways to get. Just entirely obliterated, which is almost like made being a latchkey kid even better because then you just had n- no parents anymore to do. You could th- like fucking Irish goodbye school. 
you could you could dip in, see see what you like, yeah. and then you're just like, maybe I won't go to six period. Bye. Yeah, I'm one of whatever. the only kids that have keys to their house, so <laughs> goodbye. It's like. Bye. Goodbye. I'm going. I'm going to my apartment now that I live in alone. Well, essentially, I understand some people think this place is a priority, but I think Scooby Doo is a priority. <laughs> right. Let's let's get these mysteries solved. Listen, Maury Povich is not going to watch itself. <laughs> <laughs> Maury Jenny Povich. Jones and Maury Povich <laughs> and Ricky Lake. By the way, guys, those were all after school TV shows that we watched obsessively. Ricky Lake. I think Ricky Lake. Does, did not get enough credit absolutely at, at the time for the kind of shit she was putting on she was she hers was a twist on yeah and most of her show titles rhymed in some way and she put on a happy face through the whole thing like she yes. was a positive influence in my life she was everyone's friend yeah. she was like now uh, hold on because you've already been arrested for punching her in the face <laughs> but you're gonna try to punch her in the face again yeah that's not okay. Audience, what do you think? Audience, do you want to see some makeovers? And then for for no reason, yeah, come everyone gets a makeover. You know, essentially, our podcast is uh, a, a carry on of those shows from back then. You know, except our audience is just listening to we can't communicate with them. Unfortunately, we can't run up a Phil Donahue style run up into the audience with the mic and be like, Alice from Georgia. Yeah. What do you think about all this? What do you think? It's not very creative when I use your name as this as the state. Also, they usually <laughs> it's right do there. the city name. It's right there. It's right in front of you. What were you going to say about Belgium? Oh, I was just going to tell you. It's, I think it's the Netherlands somewhere. I'm reading a book that's got really cool, weird names that's from there. And yes. actually, if you want to want to hear me try to pronounce the name of the author. Please do. Be fun. Well, it's Heads like up. a. It's a ghost story slash true crimey who done it, but fucking ghosty ghost times for sure. Yes. Like paranormal. Hell yeah. But it's like really beautifully written. Um, it's called I Remember You. Yeah, it's like it's good. It's but and the author's name is Yersa Sigurd de Toter. Oh, and Yersa I think I got Sigurd that. Toter? I think I got that right, to be honest <laughs> I, with you. I think you I think that's Bjork's sister, first of all. <laughs> and you're dead on right. Yeah. So just look up I remember you. I'm listening to it. It's beautifully read and beautifully written and so spooky. And like What how, did you say the first name's Ilsa? Yursa. So Y R S A. Y R S A. Yeah. And it's really oh. it's like a cool distraction. This couple go buys this decrepit old house on a Netherlands island and yes. has to redo it, but it's fucking haunted as shit. And then like something's going on in the village that this like detective has to figure out and hit and his son passed away and like it's and the is it, you know, ghosty ghost stuff. Okay. Do you want to hear something lightly mind blowing? Yeah. My recommendation for a TV series <gasps> this week is also Belgian. Whoa. Wait, you said Netherlands. But I don't those know. Are, those are not the same. But I don't know <laughs> where the fuck it is. I just know I can't <laughs> pronounce the name. So I'm just going to go straight to the Netherlands. Oh, got it. OK. Yeah. Sorry. For for some reason, I thought when you very first mentioned it and then I interrupted you back to to do a the horn story. <laughs> I thought you said something about Belgium. I bet I did. And that could be right, okay, too. Okay. That could be wrong <laughs> or right, too. It can all be right and wrong. OK, my it, it's just we rarely talk about Belgium. So it's exciting yeah. um, it is. that we would both be mentioning. Yeah, it. Um, I found. OK, on my streaming services. Now, this is how you, we know we're I'm digging down to the bottom of everything <laughs> is because I discovered Sundance TV, Ooh. which is one of, one of the streaming choices yeah. on my TV. And. Began to sc scroll through it and was like, this is the streaming service for me. Mm -hmm. This has all pr like foreign procedurals, ghosty ghost Scandinavian procedural. Scandinavian. That's the word. Is that what you were looking for? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's a TV series on there called Public Enemy. OK. There's already been two seasons. All right. And I believe I think I read somewhere that they're working on a third. I thought it was French. But they, I believe they're all speaking French, but it's, it takes place in Belgium. Got it. But, but if you live in either country and would like to correct me <laughs> thoroughly and in your mother tongue about it, <laughs> I'm open, um, obviously. But it's just a really creepy, good story that then has these 
uh, I just think I know what I prefer in my foreign procedurals yeah. because, you know, the Scandinavians really have honed and refined it. Yeah. And there's a spookiness so, like to it, too, because it's also like Wiccan, old timey and like nice. Everyone's nice. So. It's, but yeah. then there's always something happening in the forest. The yes. forest is the key. Yes. To most of those. This has a major forest element. Dude, in it. I'm there. Once Sopranos so, okay. is done. I'm there. Is Public it Sopranos enemy? or Sopranos? It just depends on How? what part of France you're from. <laughs> <laughs> Italy. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm I, speaking? Can I talk about Sopranos real quick? Or Sopranos? I, I talked to my therapist about this. I feel like from his therapy, I'm learning. It's extreme, but I feel like I'm learning a lot about therapy because he's the extreme version of avoiding his true feelings and the way yes. he does it through violence and even humor a lot and anger. But I'm I'm getting it in that his roadblocks are the extreme version of mine. Sure. And I think for people who are weary of therapy, it might be a good way to, to get it a little and same with like shows like um, couples therapy it might be a, a good way to like ease your anxiety about it is to watch these extreme examples because then it, it feels like you have a bir the bird's eye view it's always way easier to see somebody else's stuff yeah. and be like it's so obvious what they should right. be having a realization about but like it never is obvious to yourself because no. we all have our own blind spots yeah. I mean everyone does and every single person goes through that like a very standard cycle of denial yeah. when they're getting to the good stuff yeah because that's the hard stuff. So yeah. it's like, yeah, you watch Tony Soprano threaten his uh, <laughs> his therapist because she would not ever break that just. And how does that make you feel? Yeah, thing? which I think she's she's an extreme example. I think that there's it's a lot softer and a lot more questions and a lot more leading and kinder than she is. Not, but not in New Jersey. Sorry, <laughs> you better not wake up when you have an Italian therapist. It's in New Jersey and it's on a TV show and it's fictional. Then, I love Lorraine Lorraine Bracco's uh, accents where it's, a, it's like that exact way she talks. She's so I good. Can't, it's so good. She's so good. Um what else? Are you in the middle? Are you near the end? It feels like you've been watching the Sopranos for a while. Yeah. The Sopranos. No, we're so we're only we're in the middle. We're in season three of the Sopranos, but we're in season six of the Sopranos. <laughs> you know what I mean? So You know what that's like. You know what I mean? Like technically <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I do want to mention a podcast because last week I mentioned the uh, Kristen Smart case in San Luis Obispo yeah. and it's cold. And I mentioned the podcast, Your Own Backyard, and that I hadn't listened to it, but it's a, d a deep dive. It's hosted by um, Chris Lambert. And I can vouch for how fucking good it is. It's got Great. the vibes of the CDC's um, Someone Knows Something and a lot of those like deep dives but he's not a journalist he's not a detective in any way he's just this is his hometown and he puts it all together and interviews the journalists and interviews the people obsessed with it who have who have deep deep dive into it and it's it's an it's one of those infuriating ones though because remember i said something about the investigators working their hardest yeah there they didn't and there's so many missed opportunities and it's infuriating and i really do hope something comes of it and i think it will based on this podcast i had to i listened to it in a weekend and i just was like angry but it's so good and it's like it's a such a it's such a crazy case it's uh, the fact that it hasn't been solved is absurd yeah well it's a sm that's a small town area definitely I mean, you know, that usually is the story where it's like people kind of out of their depth having to investigate the type of crime that they have absolutely no experience right. in and then they they won't cop to it or that's or they're hiding you know, something. They're protecting or there's them. a reason they're protecting I mean, the, something. The super sinister version. Yeah. Um which by the way, speaking of which, um there's a website called The Knock LA mm -hmm. and they do it's basically kind of like local journalists and independent journalism and there is an unbelievable um uh article like a series of articles about the uh the sheriff's the LA County Sheriff's Department Oof. and the gang that exists inside it. Legit and gang. So I believe her name is Sharice Castle. Mm -hmm. It's spelled C-E-R-I-S-E. -E, so it's either 
Charisse or Cerise. Mm -hmm. This is a story she's been chasing basically since last summer, since the protests started. And um, these stories kind of started cropping up around the protests and around the action taken. And it's it's like a multi part series. Um, It's called A Tradition of Violence, the History of Deputy Gangs in the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. And it's really groundbreaking um, journalism and really important. So, yeah, it's pervasive. Well, it's a kind of thing if 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 the budget is gigantic and there's no oversight or the oversight, we know what these problems are. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's the kind of thing. Yeah. And what's it's the website cool. called again? It's the it's Knock LA. Okay. So it's knock LA dot com. Okay. Um, and that's it's kind of a good thing where like when stuff was going on in the summertime, it was just a great thing to follow that was kind of keeping you up to date. Yeah. And they were, I believe, they were the ones I found out about that Zoom. Um, city council meeting where um, I seed my time. Fuck you became an international yeah. uh, comedian. Will Weldon got on and held forth in a brilliant way so and good. then said, I seed my time. Fuck it you. It was epic. <laughs> epic. Uh, yeah. OK. So this is the the young comedians of Los Angeles oh. just continue to impress with their involvement and their activism and, totally. and actually getting into shit. So it's a little more of that. Um, I have a corrections corner or like a clarifications corner that I thought was really cool. Um, this is from Instagram from Belize, like the country. Yeah, uh, I get it. Georgia, like the state, always saying it um, says your reference to the possible Tyler Perry Medea connection. Medea is an honorific title in the black community given to the matriarch of a family. Oh, this is notably explained in Maya Angelou's I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. The name comes from the shortening of Mother Dear. Medea. Are you serious? Isn't that beautiful? Oh, my God. I'm going to cry. So That's- thank you, Belize. Just like the country. I I what a cool fact. That's um. I love learning that. And I'm embarrassed to have automatically assumed <laughs> Tyler Perry's grandmother <laughs> lived across the street. Hey, girl, I was right there with you. Uh, we were in that. And we were so excited. Fresh. It was like when you learn that people are friends growing yeah. up and you're just like, our ignorance was, Tyler was just right there in the forefront. And Jesus. that's why we have listeners is oh, to thank God. set us straight. Belize, good of you. Good on you. Good Belize. of you. Thank you kindly. Thank you. <laughs> So it's so see can, can we go back and cut that out completely <laughs> <laughs> too late right it's, it's too late. always too late it's always well, too late i mean for us. hey look we're also big fans of tyler perry so. wow Clearly. good to good to know yeah um i also have a uh light correction and this was done with such a with such a gentle hand Mm. by a listener samuel montez who's at zippo cooper on twitter and he just let me know the host of the podcast the opportunist which i recommended last time Mm -hmm. um her name is hannah smith and he he wrote and said the name of the host of the opportunist is hannah smith it says it in the show description (laughs) and then like a laughing emoji Uh, um but i swear to god i remember you looking for it hard i i I swear i opened on the at least on the itunes app i opened that show description and read that paragraph several times oh okay and didn't see her name in that well you know what then that's but also it's yeah i wouldn't blame everybody else but also, this last time when I after he sent that and I laughed and was like, oh, my God, I went to look. And one of the first reviews for it was a five star review that said Hannah Smith is a great. OK, host. so if hopefully the fans and the people who listen and care are like, fine, we'll do it. We'll do it then, Karen. <laughs> if if this Let's is what make you're this be easier like. for Karen. Uh, but anyway, okay. it's a, I can't I can't wait for this podcast like the the current um, season is like mind blowing and everyone should listen to it. Wow. But I can't wait for the further seasons, which is the the, the description of the show is um, stories about normal people who turned basically evil because of an opportunity. Love it. It's such a cool concept. Uh, that, I just yeah. think of the lottery and how it ruins everyone's lives. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. Sets people all. Have off. you ever had an experience like that? Oh, you mean when I won four hundred dollars on the giant um, <laughs> slot machine Not in Las Vegas? I just changed <laughs> changed my entire personality. I, never I literally, 
I put in like a like a silver dollar and it was one of those big oversized ones yeah, yeah. that's like just almost like a demo. Yeah. And I pulled it and it just started going. And then I like literally turned out to the crowd. I was like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> and like nobody gave a shit. It was four hundred dollars. Like there, that's, you know, one and lost in three minutes. Yeah. Las Vegas. Yeah. But I honestly was like looking for my crown and flowers. Where well, I was like, oh, thanks, everybody. Well, because you're going to lose it. But that would be like when I used to go to <laughs> Vegas when I was young and had no money, like $400 was my if I I would just blow it. And it, it was like, well, I'm fucked now because I thought I yes. was going to win. <laughs> and it's yes. been one night and I yeah. can't afford White Castle. Same. I every time I've gone, I've never won except for like in an increment like that, yeah. where in my mind, I'm like, I'm set for months. Yeah. And then it's and then like two hours later, yeah. it's almost entirely gone. Whew. I had a friend get mad at I, this kind of maybe a similar where I had a friend get mad at me when I won 350 bucks on like a quarter slot. And she was mad at me for the rest of the trip. Like it was like it should have been her. <laughs> And I was like, oh, oh that's a, a good friend. You're shitty. Yeah, let's let's yeah. walk through this. That's... Yeah, and I, and I like bought everyone lunch. No, I know but what. There, there's hundred dollars gone. Yeah, get your own fucking lunch. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> that's good. So it was supposed to be me. Is the fucking most hilarious attitude yeah. you can have in Las Vegas. I want the next time we go to Vegas. I'm gonna walk through the casino floor, and if I even hear a <laughs> bell ring, I'm gonna turn to go. What? That was supposed to be me. Uh huh. It's the thing of when someone says, and I'm really careful with this. If someone says to you, "I'm so jealous of you," rather than "I'm so happy for you." It's yeah. a really big indicator of their personality. So and yeah. so you sh and a lot of times people say it themselves, not meaning it. So just be aware when someone gets something great and you are jealous. That's it's fine. It's a normal emotion. Just say I'm happy. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Not I'm so jealous of you because it just changes right. the connotation completely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's I've never heard I you think, say it before. Maybe you're just uh, never jealous of me. But I'm not jealous of anyone. <laughs> I have everything no um no no it's because i think there's also people that it, it's totally to the person right because there's people who could say that to you and you wouldn't take it the That's wrong true. way you'd actually take it as almost like i'm confiding in you that i'm being evil because that's how good this accomplishment is yeah as opposed to there's people who could go i'm so happy <laughs> for you and their words are like knives yeah. in your ears where you're like, you're like no you're I know not you're not you're not my gut says no to this. <laughs> Your so smile anyhow, is angry. <laughs> Your smile is filled with blades. Yeah. But also, I think there's a time all of the time in my life where I hated people the most for having things or getting things uh -huh. or w winning three hundred dollars. And it's, there's been plenty. It's just the reflection of a complete lack in my own life. Yeah. And so it, it for so long, I'd just be, it, you know, it'd be like, what? I should have that, not them. And then after a while, you get a little something of your own. Yeah. And then you start to go, oh, I'm not it. I'm not supposed to have what that yeah. other people had I'm or their get... them having it does not take away my opportunities and abilities to No, i'm supposed to get mine in my own special way and that's the only way because if i was handed what they had yeah. i i wouldn't care about it yeah. you have to kind of like put some skin in the game and and earn your own and get it and then you go like wow this is really something yeah. but it also you know, that that also goes hand in hand with being addicted to shit where you're just kind of like, I need a thing and I demand it. Yeah. And then you're just kind of like, all right, well, yeah, here, it doesn't do here. Have another drink. <laughs> you're going to oh, you're going to be so much happier after this. Oh, I feel that in my bones. I feel it every day. <laughs> um, Wait, did I have one other thing? No, I, I just have I remember you and then the name Yursa written underneath it. So that's yours. I think that's it, right? For yeah. our, oh, we have a little bit of business. Yeah, but it's fun. It's like, I don't think we should call it business. It's more like we have a little bit of party time. We have a little bit of an exciting announcement. Yeah, we do. Guess, did you guys know that when you put a book out, it's hard, a hard, I mean, like physically hard, and then eventually it gets soft. That's right. <laughs> In both experience uh -huh. and material. Yeah. And so... so our SSDGM, the Say Sexy Don't Get Murdered, the book that came out in hardback is now being released 
Softbound. Yeah. On May 11th, which is my birthday this year. Oh, yeah. Do you know that? It turns out I'm working on a birthday present for you with your sister's help. I'm really bad at surprises. <laughs> I'm not telling you what it is. It's a Sephora gift card. I'm not, but it's really special and it's going to make Laura you But Laura has to help you pick it up. <laughs> uh, no, but it's true for your birthday. Amazing. Yeah. All right. I feel well, like then... it's because your 50th last year had to be in quarantine. So I'm going to make 51 the double time special. Oh, uh, well, I love that. I, I guess I should do the same for you yeah. since you had for, your 40th That's in quarantine. That would be great. Um, we'll blow it out. We'll blow it out. I'm going to get you a confetti cannon, not to give it away immediately, but that's <laughs> what you're going to get. Yeah, um, you're going to love it. Back to us. Our book is out. Yes. It's going to be out on this paperback. This is a book announced. <laughs> it's going to be out. <laughs> so you can um, pre-order it, which is really great. If you're th- if you're going to buy it, please pre-order it. That's just all we're asking because it just helps with, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. So, popularity. Popularity. Numbers. Numbers. There's some sort of numbers. Yeah. Situation. It's the same like but, rate, review, subscribe on podcast. It's pre-order for books. Exactly. And and while you're at it, yeah. why not pre-order it from your local independent bookstore? Hell. Always a cool move. Yeah. But here's a little extra carrot that we're going to dangle for you. Mm-hmm. There is a little bit of a, a, a sample of something that we've been working on. That's in the soft uh, cover. Why are we calling it that? I don't the know. paperback version flaccid. of the book. Let's call it. And flaccid. so if you the, if you order it, you're going to get um, a, a little sneak peek at what we've been looking at. So That's all right. of that is going to be possible for you uh, in two months, May 11th, 2021. Essentially, there's a new chapter in the book and it's a sneak peek. And it's and it's so it's extra content than in yes. the in the hard version. The flaccid version has extra content. Let's not call it the flaccid. <laughs> you know, version. I beg. This, I'm it, begging. The book this is a secretion of our emotion. <laughs> <laughs> did you just spit your drink? Oh, I almost did a Diet Pepsi spit take. <laughs> the worst kind there is. We just secreted our hearts and souls <laughs> into this book, <laughs> and the flaccid version has more secre- extra secretions. No, is this, this doing it for you? Steven, Steven, don't just cut this. Burn it as you're cutting it. And I don't know how you do that with digital, but I want this whole thing burnt. Don't do it. I think that was the best words I've don't ever do, spat from my mouth. Don't do it. Don't take this from me. <laughs> I think so that was the eloquentest I've ever eloquented. <laughs> and I'm proud of myself. And you can find that and more. in stay sexy. Don't get murder. <laughs> yes, right. If you even like this. Uh, this flaccid debate, <laughs> then you're going to love Stay Sexy, Don't Get Murdered, the paperback version. That's right. You're- With extras. Uh, oh. We say all the details coming out May 11, 2021. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Yeah, that- I said it twice. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said it thrice. Okay. <laughs> what else? Oh, we, oh we just have a couple. We have some fun stuff happening on the network. If you want to know, for example, mm-hmm. the great Lisa Traeger. From That's Messed Up, the SVU podcast from Exactly Right is going to be on Lady to Lady. That's right. And this podcast will kill you. Aaron and Aaron discuss Huntington's disease, uh, which remains shrouded in mystery. So that comes out this week. I, I can't imagine it's not the awesomest frickin' episode. Here's oh, what I love about yeah. uh, this podcast will kill you. They're one of our original podcasts and they're still going strong. So like hard. People love this podcast. It's Aaron and Aaron kick ass weekly. So if you haven't given it a try yet, yeah, get over there and see what you see what you think. And speaking of Lady doing. the Lady, Margaret Show, the great Margaret Show, who Karen has hung out with in the 90s, uh, is on as a guest. One of my oldest and dearest friends, Margaret Show, is also now a family member of the Exactly Right Mm -hmm. Podcast Network, which is really fun and nice. Love it. So The old gals love stuff like that. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Legend. She's legendary. Um, Legend. Cool. Before we put up our quilt episodes from this week, which I mean, I'm so glad they're being uh, broadcast to the world because they're great stories, both of them. Uh, We want to address a issue that we think is important and it's um, a huge problem. And that is the racism that the Asian community is facing right now and historically. And it's, it's shocking and, you know, 
disgusting and we're horrified by it. So many people in our society don't understand um, that this is an epidemic for Asian people as well. You know, I, I, I don't think people see it. And so I really think that we need to highlight it and and um, and talk about it. It's a huge problem that we can't ignore and that we need to support this community. Yeah, the um, the lives that were lost in Atlanta and that is such a we always talk about these mass shootings or senseless shootings. We always talk about afterwards. We need to talk about the victims names. You know, the these the conversation is becoming so redundant because there are people in this world who think they can solve their own issues by going out and killing whoever they decide mm -hmm. should die. And that is a it, it's an oppressive state that everyone has to live in. But especially, you know, this is a targeted group. Asian Americans have been targeted for years. Mm -hmm. So there's a collective called Red Canary Song and uh, their website is redcanarysong.net. And they call themselves a grassroots collective of Asian and migrant sex workers who um are organizing transnationally. And so um, they're basically their mission, it says on their website, um, centers base building with migrant workers through the, a labor rights framework and mutual aid. We believe that full decriminalization is necessary for labor organizing and anti-trafficking. Hashtag rights, not raids. Hashtag sex work is work. Um, so essentially, this is this is a collective of people who are getting together to stand up for the rights of undocumented sex workers and sex workers um, basically across this nation. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it's a really I think it's really cool because it's such direct aid. Yeah. And it's such a good thing to support. So um, we're going to give ten thousand dollars to Red Canary Song in support of the victims of the Atlanta shooting and to basically to help them with the, with the work that they're doing on the street. That's right. And please donate if you can. If not, a great way to get the word out there is just to just get the word out and, and make it visible and keep it at the forefront of people's minds. I'm Kate Winkler Dawson, the host of Tenfold More Wicked on Exactly Right. And this is my new show, Tenfold More Wicked Presents Wicked Words. I've interviewed writers about their best true crime stories, like Brian Burrow, who tells me about going to high school with a serial killer. Dude, if you're lying about this, you're lying about everything. Well, it's manipulation. Yeah. Tenfold More Wicked Presents Wicked Words is now available on Exactly Right with new episodes every Monday. Follow Tenfold More on Twitter and Tenfold More Wicked on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe now and find Wicked Words on the Tenfold More Wicked feed on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you like to listen. All right, so I'm first this week. Thank you, Stephen. Um, and so I am doing a story <laughs> from... Um, May 5th, 2019. This was at the Toyota Music Factory in Dallas, Irving, Dallas slash Irving, Texas, which was such a fun big group old of shows. Big old show. Oh, I had big I, old show. We had fucking cowboy hats waiting for us in the green room. It was <laughs> it was wild. It was awesome. Um, and so I'm doing the Adolphus Hotel Ghosts, which was mm -hmm. terrifying. We had video footage going of elevators going bonkers. It scared the shit out of me. Definitely. Um, so take a listen. Don't listen in a dark room at late at night. <laughs> it's scary. Uh, and have fun. This is the Adolphus Hotel Ghosts. <laughs> it's you. It's me tonight? I yeah. start? Okay, yeah. I'm first tonight, guys. Thanks. All right. Well, this one has it all. Ghosts. What? Ghosts. Just two ghosts? Just a lot of ghosts. <laughs> One ghost murders another. Get ready. <laughs> Forensic files, take that. <laughs> this is the deaths and ghosts of the Adolphus Hotel. Oh! Yeah. Um, so it turns out you, you guys have a really safe Six Flags over Texas. 
And only two people have ever died there. Oh, no <laughs> stories to talk about from there? No, it's, open, no. it's been open 52 years, and there's only been two deaths. A Roaring Rapids and Texas Giant roller coaster. Roaring Rapids, that's a bummer, that's right? That's a tough one. But someone must have stood up, right? No. That's, that's what it always it was. Is. It was their fault. Oh, <clears throat> there the was water a... became electric? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. What? That boat tipped over. No. I but know. that was in the 50s? No. Shit. <laughs> I tried to help you, Six Flags. <laughs> I tried to help you. Um, okay, so let me tell you about the Adolphus Hotel. I, and I got so much information from D Magazine. There's an article by a woman named S. Holland Murphy who just fucking wrote the article about it. Um... <laughs> She wrote the fuck out of that article? She did. She, like, went to the library and, like, microfiched, yeah. and then I just copied and pasted all of it. But yeah. she's a great writer. Yeah. I appreciate her. <laughs> Let's Holland hear Murphy. word for word how she did it. Okay. <laughs> no, I didn't <clears throat> completely. Okay. In 1910... Go back there. Okay. The city of Dallas is booming. <laughs> and the city leaders decides it needs a grand hotel for rich white people. Right. Um, so they convince this dude, Adolphus Bush, B-U-S-C-H, founder of the Anheuser-Busch Company. Woo! <laughs> that company got me through the late 80s, early 90s. <laughs> Thank you, Anheuser-Busch. And all your horses and all your men. <laughs> He basically bought stock in <laughs> Anheuser-Busch in the 90s. One would hope. One would think. Um, okay, so they're like, hey, dude, you're rich. Will you build this? And he was like, I'm on it. And so construction began later that year in a new $1 million hotel. They spent a million, which in today's money is... 1910, a million. That's easily $3 billion today. $25 million. That might be wrong. $2.5 billion Thank today. Thank you. That's almost $3 billion. I'm getting fucking good at this future money thing. You are. You're really good at it. I was $0.5 billion away from being <laughs> right on the money. <laughs> so they start building this hotel where Dallas City Hall once stood that was to be to elevate downtown Dallas, which at the time was considered, un, considered un, 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 unsophisticated. <laughs> Whatever that means. Unconfisticated? Unconfisticated. <laughs> and they wanted to turn it into a classy joint. So uh, here's what it looks like. That's that's Hello. A, that's Adolphus Bush and all his facial hair. That's, you would, it makes sense that you'd be in a boardroom and you'd turn to this guy and go, can you please build us a hotel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he knows hotels, I Look hope. At, I mean, what? He's, that's a very wide coat. It is. The he's, breadth and width of He's his. got a breadth and width to him, doesn't <laughs> he? Does. Okay, well, he was like, you know what I'm going to do? Boom. Boom. I'm going to do that. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. With its own moon. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. And actually, so when, they, when it opened in October 5th, 20... Nope, 1912. <laughs> that would take a long time. That would be. Um, the Adolphus Hotel was the first posh grand hotel in, in Dallas, and the 22-story hotel was the tallest building in the state of Texas for almost a decade. Shit. So, like, look at these little tiny, like, hovels that bow Nothing. down. Get your own moon. Get out of here. Right. It's, that's our moon. It's our moon. Okay, so it opens. It's tall, et cetera. <laughs> So the, now the hotel is known as one of the most haunted spots in Dallas. Mm. <laughs> Second only to this room. What? No. We asked. <laughs> it's only two years old, but who knows what stood on it before. They probably do. That would be, we should have had a lighting cue where it all goes out. <gasps> like all the, light, the lights go out, including the exit sign. <laughs> oh, that's illegal. <laughs> 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 because the scariest thing is a fire hazard. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, all right. So the guests at the Adolphus have reported a number of strange experiences. There's complaints from guests being woken up by the sound of someone running down the hallways, which me too, right? They've, I, yeah. We've, we've gotten that a couple times. Yeah, and it's children or ghosts. <laughs> I don't know. 
Ghost children. Ghost children. The worst of all. That's right. Um, people feel like someone's watching them at all times in a really creepy way. They hear doors slam or hear the sound of a swing band playing music, like old timey music, in the middle of the night. Mm. And when these incidents are reported, the hotel security goes to investigate. Of course, there's nothing uh, there. And actually, the 19th floor of the hotel appears to be the like biggest concentration of ghost activities because there was a ballroom located there in uh, like in the way back time and <laughs> there were big bands playing there like Benny Goodman and Glenn Miller played there and so you can still hear the music sometimes late at night playing which sounds kind of nice I mean if you're gonna get haunted I guess that's not the worst way now there's simply no way it could be the radio Karen or, uh, I'm just saying are you a ghost debunker? I might be a bit of a devil's advocate, <laughs> just for fun on this one. Oh, it's the devil? It's the it's devil. It's the devil and his band. <laughs> the only, I guess you know what it is, is that swing music and swing, when you first were like, a swing dancing, and then I was like, the works. So that doesn't feel <laughs> threatening to me. Yeah. That feels like a, a gap ad from the 90s. I'm like, stop it. <laughs> stop throwing her over your back. It's not interesting. <laughs> Did you ever have to go on a terrible date where you went swing dancing? <laughs> uh, uh, never like, once. No way. How many of us fucking tried to convince our boyfriends at the time to take us to this fucking swing dance lesson? Did you for real? I tried. And he was like, I guess I'll go. But it never happened. You know why I didn't? Because I was blacked out drunk <laughs> in the gutter. <laughs> Thank you. He says, no, I, I don't need dancing. <laughs> so shut up. No one's going to swing Karen over their shoulder unless they're carrying her home. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's so true. Um, okay, so, yeah, like, you know, the normal fucking ghosty shit. Um, but see, here's the thing is there's been a shit ton of deaths that have happened since the hotel opened okay. in 1922. So they contribute those deaths to the rumors of it being haunted. And including multiple murders from a very murderous, nefarious elevator shaft out for vengeance, which is all I can come to the conclusion of because it's, that's my thought. It's that or a lot of people just are clumsy. Okay. <laughs> October 20... God damn it. Steven, cut that out. <laughs> Steven. Uh, Steven! Oh, he didn't even give... Shout out to Steven. Sorry, we missed you at the top. <laughs> He's not here. Aww. He's not here. But he's listening in the future. <laughs> yeah. As a ghost. Uh, Can you he... tell I'm trying to make this spooky even though I don't really believe in ghosts? <laughs> God damn it. Okay. He died of mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out his mustache wax had uh, stuff in arsenic. it. Arsenic. Arsenic in it. Okay, so just two weeks after the Adolphus' grand opening, an Italian waiter who had just moved to Dallas from Chicago... Okay. Um, <laughs> he was in the main lobby of the hotel, walking toward the elevator, and he's like, he turns to, he's walking towards the elevator, and he's like, yeah, what's up? Let's just get in the elevator. It turns out that he didn't notice the elevator lift is already left, and he falls three floors down the elevator shaft. Shit. His skull is crushed, and he dies two hours later at the Baptist Sanitarium, where doctors unsuccessfully performed the operation of raising the bone, which I don't know what that is, but I, I guess I tried to do it last night after forensic trials. <laughs> <laughs> it's in a work. Yeah, girl. That's right. That wasn't... I did not plan that, and I'm sweating now. <laughs> Was um, that a genuine riff? Yeah. Come on. That's what we're looking for. Let me show you this uh, lobby that distracted Fucking him. Raise Ooh, that bone. I don't know where... <laughs> It's a, lo it's a lobby. It's, it's beautiful. nice. It's right. humongous. It's huge. Watch out for that elevator shaft. Okay. It is murderous. Okay. Um, in May 1913, a 45-year-old insurance man and Shriner from New Hampshire is out for a walk with a group of men after they have a nice dinner at the Adolphus. He becomes ill and, quote, sinks to the sidewalk. His friends help him back to the hotel, and 30 minutes later, he's dead. The death has ruled an acute attack of indigestion <laughs> and apoplexy, which could mean a stroke, but it's also possible the medical examiner used this as a random term for sudden death since yeah. they didn't have the like technology we have now. So they were like, he's dead. 
it's either stroke or this or that or that. Apoplexy. They like, yeah, they lift up his coat and they're just like, this really feels like apoplexy to me. <laughs> I don't, and I've got to go. Right. <laughs> um, we still, we have to figure out what raising the bone is though. I they, tried. They move his skull around or I think something? it's like they, yeah, I tried to find it and it's like cranial fucking craniotomy it's definitely a cra- if that's the same person that jumped my line you're dead me i'm gonna find you in the parking lot it's not she's a craniologist <laughs> you're only allowed to yell shit out if it's real true science no you're not allowed to yell okay. shit out at all you're god never. damn it never 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 <laughs> but also what if it's just a crane that's yelling stuff <laughs> I get to do my National Geographic jokes. It, it's not all boner jokes, God damn it. They <laughs> throw you under the bus immediately. I, I was just trying to get a cheap <laughs> laugh. God. Okay, in February 1915, a 26-year-old man is in town on business from Iowa. He's at dinner with a, another businessman. That's in, all they did back then. That's all they did is business dinners. He, he goes, excuse me, I'm going to go to my room real quick and go to the bathroom. He goes up there, and then he, quote, throws himself across the bed and is soon in convulsions and fucking dies on the bed. And when they go to check it out, they find in the bathroom an almost empty six-ounce bottle labeled Poison. With a skull and crossbones? Probably. Yeah. I've seen that before. It, it tur- Here's the note that he left right before he died. Quote, I got the wrong bottle. Love to all. <gasps> Ooh, he's kind of a joker. No, I think he act- I think he was like, I think they put, you know, mouthwash and poison in the same bottles then. And he was like, swig. <laughs> oh, fuck. Guy screwed up. Goodbye. <laughs> Doesn't that suck? You know when you're like, I bet they were drunk because they're businessmen. I hope so. <laughs> so like 10 old fashions later, I guess fashions are called back then. <laughs> later. Swiggeroo of the fucking, right? And then, God damn it, this was for the rats. <laughs> like why, why would you have a mouthwash sized bottle of poison right near the bathroom sink? These are all great questions. All right. I don't have answers. All okay. Right. In December 1917, after stopping to let a passenger off the sixth floor of the Adolphus Annex, which is a brand new 12-story edition, they kept building shit, um, the 16-year-old elevator boy attempts to hop on the already ascending elevator. He's going to like, zoop, oh, it's going, but I'm going to get it. No, Zachariah, no. (laughs) He falls 100 feet to the basement and dies, obviously. Okay. This fucking elevator shaft. Yeah, it's angry. They're, at no point were they like, how about a little gate? How about we put up a gate? <laughs> how about we put like a basic fucking... I mean, were they not used to moving mechanical things back then? Maybe. Was that it? Where they just didn't have the respect? <laughs> or they were like, if you're going to do... Like, it's your, everything's your fault back then. I think up until like 2001, everything is your fault. Oh, that's right. Right? You can sue anybody. No. Every, it was every man for himself. Exactly. <laughs> So in January 1920, just after 11 p.m., um, on the Commerce Street entrance to the Adolphus, a chauffeur for the auto for a different auto company is fatally shot three times by the chauffeur from the Adolphus. Like I think it's the like chauffeurs, and they're like dueling chauffeur Fuck company, yeah, like chauffeur wars. Yeah, that new show on the Discovery Channel. <laughs> What the fuck? So it turns out, and like 20 people witnessed the shooting, um, and one of the co-worker, co-workers of the victim tells police that the man who was dead had started a fight at the chauffeur's strike several days before oh, shit. with this other dude, and the gunman had a bruise and cut on his face to show that he had gotten in a fight with this guy. The guy shows up and fucking shoots him dead. Why weren't they still on strike? They'd settled it all down? On October 20th, 1920... <laughs> You're right. You're right. Thank you. <laughs> I'm asking you about <laughs> union yeah. union issues yeah. from 1910. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't. I'm, I'm always asking you not to ask me about unions. So sorry. You know it's my trigger. <laughs> but it's my passion. <laughs> <laughs> your passion. This is never going to work. My passion is your trigger. The Karen and Georgia story. <laughs> yes. Forward by our therapist who we haven't seen in months. <laughs> He must be happy for us. I mean, he's like, they must be fine. They're great. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) This is your job. (laughs) Karen. Yes, 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 yes. 
Yes. <laughs> and we're back. Listen, we're back at the fucking elevator shaft. Oh, no. In October 1924, a 30-year-old cook sticks his head in the fucking elevator no, shaft. No, dude, no. Why is that damn elevator? And he's taking a sip of poison as he do- <laughs> does it. Should be down here pretty soon. Instantly killed by the descending car. I would imagine. And then, like, you got to think about the ripple effects of all of these people who watched people die in elevator shafts. Sure. Did they get a free night at the Adolphus Hotel? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Right? Yes, you can have, um, you, there's aspic, or you could have, I'm trying to think of old-fashioned dishes, just a bunch of gravy. <laughs> <laughs> on us. It's on us. Do you know? Consomme. Consomme. Oh, just so much consomme. Yeah. Um, how about a bunch of herring? No <laughs> sides included. <clears throat> this reminds me, quick sidebar. My dad told me a story one time because he's a, a, a firefighter in San Francisco. And one time they went to a call and when they got there, it was an elevator that had dropped do they the do ma- that a lot? Do they drop I don't a think lot? they drop a lot. Okay, great. Although I do always, after he told me the story, check. You know, there's a um, certificate oh, inside yeah. every elevator, and you can check the last time it was inspected. As, so, you're, as you're descending. As you're, <laughs> as you're like, ooh, my stomach did it. Oh, shit, 93. <laughs> so my dad told me that they walked in. I think it was a bank or some old building in San Francisco, and they walked in, and the elevator car was all the way, almost all the way down, and the and a guy's foot was sticking out of it. And he had stepped into the elevator car and then it dropped. With his weight, something happened. The car snapped, dropped, caught on his foot. So the only thing that was keeping it from continuing to fall down was the fact that his foot was stuck. Dang. I have so many questions. <sighs> okay, wait, so his foot was still on his body? Yes. Well, yes. Well, because he was hanging upside down in the dropped Holy elevator car. Holy shit! Yes. Okay, and so if he had moved, the elevator would have dropped. No. He could not have moved because he was pinned by the top of the. He was basically pinned by being stuck like was that. He okay. So that Noah. <laughs> There's nothing okay about that man. Did he end up okay? I believe so, because they had to. And of course, I'm not kidding. I'm sure that when my dad told me the story, I was like seven. (laughs) Like, (laughs) mouthful of honeycomb. He's like, like, here's another thing for you to be terrified of the rest of your fucking life. Elevators. Yes. I guess they had to get a, a jack in. Like, they went out to a car, got a jack, and then they had to hold the guy's foot, which was smashed, Oy. and then jack the elevator car up enough to get him out. Goodbye. Uh, yep. Take what the a fucking fun, stairs. What a fun comedy sidebar that was. <laughs> you know what it is? I just, there's things like this that, because of my father, I've been holding inside yeah. for years, and now I can get them out, like, 4,000 people yeah. at a time. Give it to them. They love it. Give it to, it's not yours anymore. This is a, they do. It's first responder shit. This yeah. is, please have some respect for the first responders and the horrible things they see at all times. Man. Guys, if you have anxiety, anxiety, I highly suggest you start a podcast and just spill all your shit yeah. to people. Yeah, you just get it right out. It's great. Moving on to more shit. Great. Um, then, February 1930, a hat model. She must have had a lovely head. She's fine. Uh, <laughs> she walks into the hotel room of a, 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 a sixty-year-old man. He's a hat salesman. She's gonna. Uh, I don't know. This a, is this is dirty. <laughs> a hat salesman walks into a bar. No. First of all, when have you ever seen a hat model? They just stick them on those styrofoam yeah. heads. I don't really understand this either. Okay, I won't, I think, I won't ask questions. <laughs> no, ask them because I have them too. Okay. Um, he, she's gonna go help him with his. Dis- Maybe he's gonna take photographs of her in the jaunty little. I don't know. In a hat only. The point is, mm. yeah. <laughs> the point is, the man is nowhere to be found, and she notices that there's a torn window screen, and so she notifies the staff, and the man's body is soon found in an air shaft. <gasps> what? How? She no- um, The young woman tells authorities that the man had recently been despondent and told her he wouldn't see his family again. Um, how did he get into the air shaft? According to uh, the news or the newspaper, the force. The quote, the force gained in the fall from the eighth floor where he fell from caused the body to tear through the galvanized iron roof of an air shaft 
in one of the inside courts. He plunged through the bottom of the shaft and, uh, and fell through where the blades of the air shaft oh my were god that's like raiders of the lost ark shit yeah um and then that explains the loud crash and puff of dust from fans reported by kitchen employees the night before <laughs> cover the consomme <laughs> Put your hands out. Now, I don't know if that's just a little bit made up by S. Holland Murphy, but I'm going to stick to it. <laughs> and it's now fact. Wow. Well, it would, it would make sense if yeah. you had that kind of an impact. It's just like, it what cleans that shit out. Bummer. Okay. Okay. June 1940, a crowd gathers outside the hotel when a man with his clothes ablaze falls from the 11th floor <laughs> and dies on impact on the bottom some witnesses thought he was overcome by smoke and falls. Other people thought he jumped to escape the flames. Four days later, after it, what is called an extensive investigation, but who knows? An extensive four-day investigation. Right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Into the man's death, jurors decide no state laws were violated during the incident, though nowhere is the fire explained, and they all got a free stay at the hotel. <laughs> I made that part up, but probably. And the coroner walks up. That's totally apoplexy if I've ever seen it. <laughs> yes. Yep. Where's my free aspic? <laughs> In August 1946, uh, okay, according to the fire marshal, a 51-year-old man uh, wakes up and takes his burn pillow and sheets into the bathroom. He had fallen asleep while smoking and lit the bed on oh, fire. Right. Sure. And he was like, I'm just going to bundle this up and put it in the tub. Then he dies after inhaling smoke and gas when the fire starts back up again. <laughs> He didn't, like, tamp it out. I don't know. Well, Don't smoke in bed, friends. And also, don't drink and smoke in bed, <laughs> because I think that's a piece of it. Did you ever do that? There. Here, the fire's out. Hang on. Tie tie. That's right. Um, okay. All right. So here's some fucking murdery shit. That's what you guys are here for. <laughs> um, I mean, the guy with his suit on fire... Is enough. That, that alone yeah. is amazing. What was his thing? It, the jury said it was fine. Everything's <laughs> fine. <laughs> he grabbed the wrong bottle. It's fine. Yep. <laughs> um, in uh, 1959 of July, the body of a 25-year-old sex worker is found in a small courtyard 14 floors below her room. The Dallas Morning News described the woman's body plunging down the four by eight inset in the building and hitting the walls as she went down. Ugh. And also included was the details of such things as what the book she had been reading that was lying on her bed, which was A Fool There Was. Have you read it? Yeah, I love it. Um, it's a lot like Twilight. <laughs> uh, the, the, I, I looked it up and it said, a cunning woman who uses her irresistible charms to, to seduce and abandon a series of influential men. You know how we like to do. Yeah. There are signs of a struggle, but the case remains unsolved for months. Many men uh, are questioned, but it isn't until months later in January of 1959 when an 18-year-old woman was beaten and left for dead at a mercantile at the Mercantile uh, Continental Building in a closet, and in th authorities find a man named Willie Philpot who had worked at the Adolphus, and they question him, and he confesses to both the beating of the woman at the Mercantile who survived and the murder of the woman at the Adolphus. Wow. He tells authorities that he had been working at the Adolphus and had delivered food to the woman's room throughout the day, and she invited, he says she invited him in for some whiskey, and while they were talking, quote, his hand began to twitch in a murdery way, which is like, dude. Well, that's when you leave. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Great idea. If the murder hand starts going, go back <laughs> to your own fucking room. Yeah. Take a cold shower, friend. Turn yourself in, maybe. Maybe. Oh, so turns out I have a murder hand. Could you put <laughs> me into a cell or a hospital of some kind? Yeah. I oh, want to see the rooms at the Adolphus? Yeah. Oh, Ooh. Haunted. 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 Smells weird. <laughs> also humongous. Yeah. Huge. And we're like, and that was $7 a night. Yeah, truly. <clears throat> okay. So. Um, so he says that he, she invited him in, his hand, his murder hand began to twitch, he chokes her, and then when she stopped moving, he threw her out the window and went back to work. Wow. He's, uh, also confessed to the murder of a 10-year-old girl in Longview, and he's executed for that murder. Wow. Yay. Um, 
March 1971, a witness says, uh, he warns the hotel porter to make sure the elevator car is on the second floor. He's going to load in some band equipment. Remember that swing dancing we heard? Hey, help me. Wait, it's 1971, so it's... That's right. Um, but... <laughs> this is... I don't laugh like that. I don't know what's happening. We know. <laughs> It's like, it's the phlegm guy coming back to haunt you. He's like, I'll show you. <laughs> He's having his revenge. That's right. Um, just after replying, after the hotel porter says, yeah, the, the elevator's right here. See? And steps into it. Guess what? It's not there. No. Okay. It seems like with this elevator, it never is. No. <laughs> I'm telling you, this fucking elevator is a murderer. Yeah, it is. The most famous spirit that everyone claims to see at the Adolphus, of course, is the Lady in White, which I think every popular hotel has to have. Yeah. The story is that a young woman was left at the altar, um, getting married. She was going to get married. It was during the Depression era, and she was so upset that her fiancé didn't show up for the wedding that she hanged herself in the hotel's grand ballroom on the 19th floor. Um, and now she roams the halls of the Adolphus, sobbing and trailing after hotel ghosts. Many ghosts have reported seeing an apparition of a young woman in an old-fashioned bridal gown. Can I just ask one question? Absolutely. She's trailing after ghosts? Did I say that? Yeah. Hotel guests. Guests. Yes. <laughs> no, but think of it. How scary is the ghost that haunts other ghosts? That's horrifying. That is... That's next level fucking EMT meter shit where you are like... <laughs> well, it's fact now because I said it. <laughs> what? Yeah. Then the ghost union gets involved. You can't <laughs> haunt them if they're haunting people. One per ghost. Please. Please don't haunt the haunted. <laughs> haunt, wait, okay. Yeah. They all see the, the guests... I'll see the ghost um, of a young woman in an old-fashioned bridal gown on the 19th floor. She's been seen wandering other areas of the hotel as if searching for something. And when people cre uh, they like sneak up to the 19th floor, I think it was under construction for a while, they always felt, I just wrote, they feel different temperatures. Yeah. <laughs> and feel like someone's watching them. Because <laughs> they're like, it's hot, it's cold, it's hot. And it's like, all right, it's, maybe it's hot or cold, and it's a fucking building from the 1912s. Yeah. But it's not. It's haunted. Um, guests regularly uh, phone the front desk to report heavy footsteps in the hall or muffled conversation in empty rooms. And when security goes to investigate, there's nobody around. And they've also, the employees have reported strange activity in the hotels. Maids will feel, uh, I'm sorry, hotel staff will feel a tap on the shoulder when no one is around. Ew. That's not a good one. No. And, yeah. Oh, just sidebar, but I, uh, today... I got no brag breakfast, uh, room service breakfast. <laughs> and then I left to go fucking walk on a treadmill. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah. Wow. I'm, just, I'm at least putting in half an effort. And um, <laughs> since, uh, anyway. Um, I got it. I can't I'm there. get I into it. it right now. But when I got back to my room, it was filthy as I left it. Um, but the room service tray was gone. <gasps> so and like, like snuck in and stole your... Well, I, I didn't ask for it to be removed. I kind of was thinking I might go back to that, <gasps> to those berries when I come yeah. home. And it was like, isn't that weird? That's Someone so just weird. came and took just the tray. No one cleaned my room or made the bed <laughs> or did anything helpful. Gave me new towels. It was just like, yeah, we'll be taking this back now. <laughs> we only have one. You can't just pick your food for four hours. <clears throat> We're mad anyway, at our just hotel. more of a complaint than anything else. Sorry. <laughs> We're not staying at the Adolphus, otherwise that would not have happened. Um, okay, blah, 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 bartenders say that bottles move around and shit. Okay, what? I know. And flip up in the air like in cocktail? Ooh. The ghost of Tom Cruise. <laughs> okay, there's several videos on YouTube, meaning two videos on YouTube, <laughs> that, show you, that show elevator doors on the 19th floor that open and close on their own, mm. and um, the, the courtesy phone on the desk there rings all the time, too, and no one's ever on the line. Want to see a video of that? Hell yeah. Okay, so there's a video by someone named Aristolik. He says, we were on the elevator at the Adolphus Hotel in Dallas, 
got up at the 19th floor and all the elevator doors were opening and closing like crazy Ooh. and the phones were ringing. This happened two nights in a row and I don't think there's any volume on it, which is even creepier. Ready? Ooh, do we get to watch? Vi- oh, how good is this? Yes. Look at them opening and closing. Oh, thank you for the light. I didn't know we could run video. I didn't either. I asked Jay and he's like, I'm on it. Hell yes. That's ringing in the video. <laughs> ring, 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 ring. I'm oh just- my God. And then look, they start opening and Come on. Okay. Opening. Everyone's freaking out. Why is that one opening? Um, why am I? Yeah, that one just opened. Why am I narrating this? They just started like ding, 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 closing, opening. God damn it. This is supposed to be scary. Am I not helping? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they are all opening, closing. Look. You can't argue that. No. They're freaking out. Also, I just saw a ghost run by. <laughs> Did you see it? He was he was he was wearing a slipknot shirt. <laughs> Ooh, the, I saw him with my own eyes. The ghost with the cargo shorts. Yes, the scariest. Okay, so the Adolphus has embraced the haunted reputation. Um, they, there's a stop on a haunted tour that's called the Nightly Spirits. They stop by the bar. The hotel is known as one of the fucking swankiest hotels in Texas, and you know it's really nice now. But people go there just to look for ghosts. Yes. And the Adolphus was added to the natural. National Register of Historic Places, blah, 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 top 10 hotels by a bunch of travel guides. And since its construction in 1912, the Adolphus has maintained a reputation for being fancy and swanky, and guests want to keep coming back, which they think is why the ghosts won't leave. Mm. And that is the deaths and ghosts of the Adolphus Hotel. Amazing. I want to see that. Yeah. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> You're going to sleep with the lights Delightful. on tonight? Yeah, do it. Delightful. It's so funny to be going into these old shows and be trying to remember, like, this experience that we have is so, uh, like... It basically is like one of three things. You know what I mean? We walk in the back door. We get walked down a long hallway. Yeah. We sit in a green room. We put on our makeup. We do our hair. Yeah. Georgia tries to convince me to pose with her for a picture on Instagram. <laughs> I say no. And if you do it, I'll kick you in the shin. And then I go, she but says, look at this photo. And you're like, okay, that's what about okay. this one? And then she says, don't forget filters. And then I'm like, all right, fine. Um, it goes on and on. We then zip we each other's out. dresses. We fucking. <laughs> there's, she p- pulls up my spanks for me. All, there's so much teamwork. I forget to but... strap my shoes on before I zip up my tight ass dress. So I have to force Vince like a slave to yeah. buckle my <laughs> heels. And when they get into stuff like that, I step out into the hallway and say, you guys do what you need to do as a pre-show ritual. That's fine. But then it's really funny because then in in talk, some of these some of the places are very different. Yeah. And so my story is going to be from uh, the D.C. Constitution Hall. Oh, yeah. I think we both remember uh, February 2nd, 2019. Um, so this is a lot of stuff happened at the D.C. Constitution Hall. We had a lot of uh, peak experiences there. Absolutely. It, the look of it was very distinctive. So I can remember being there I very clearly. Too. The audience was like a gorgeous, emotional tide that it ebbed and flowed with us they they were there they were laughing they were gasping they were right just on the edge of their seats we had the legendary hometown of the woman who tried her best to talk about Lorena Bobbitt and the she couldn't get it out possibly won the award for the drunkest person that's ever been on a stage she like she wishes she's <laughs> the drunkest person she doesn't even know me this is oh. the one where Vince Vince, you know, he'll, he'll have them come up to him and wait in the wings with him. And he said, oh, fuck. As soon as she, <laughs> bless her heart. We're not making fun of her. I'm sure she's lovely and was nervous, whatever, and not expecting hey. to go on stage. Under, hey. I've been, Karen. Hey. Have we been there? I, it, when we're talking about no judgments on, dr- <laughs> on drunkenness, I'm telling you that if I even had an I concept of judgment about drunkenness, I would be sm- smote down by the Lord because <laughs> I have been inappropriately drunk in so many churches at so many baby showers in so many situations. I've had I'm friends not la- from high is, school. I feel bad laughing. It's Dude, a- you can laugh. It's it's the kind of thing where I want you to understand that whether that woman does that every night or if she just does it once a year, 
I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. I fucking loved it. Mm-hmm. It it made my day. And that's the kind of thing where people go, oh, my God, I'm so embarrassed. I got so drunk last night. And I always go, that's the point. Yeah. Whatever you did, you you fucking peed in a driveway. <laughs> Whatever you did that you're so humiliated by. That was the agreement that you entered into. Karen just did a that signature, w- an air signature, by the way. <laughs> you can't see I it. don't want people. It's it's let you can have the shame, but then leave the shame. Yeah. Leave the shame at the, or, at the garbage dump. Or do something with the shame that's constructive if that's what you need to do, which we, un- yeah. we understand that, too. If the shame's been sitting there for a long time and you can't get it to move, then maybe drink less so you don't have so much shame yeah. to fucking deal yeah. with. And you're just not shoveling it all over the place totally, all the time. Totally. But if you're going to have one great night, do it at the... Constitution <laughs> Hall, the huge, rectangular, shallow, humongous uh-huh. place, and do it. I don't know if it was the same night because it was actually a series of shows. Yeah. But this on February second, this night, I told everybody about the legend of the Bunny Man, oh, and so that's what you're about to hear. That was scary too. Fuck, <laughs> this is a it's scary, very unnerving. This is this scary episode. This is what we call. This is our Halloween in March show. <laughs> don't you miss Halloween? This is the giant skeleton show. <laughs> yep. Right. Bring him yeah. back. Bring him Bring back. back. He never went anywhere. There's people that are now dressing him up as the Easter Bunny. I fucking love and it. Dressed, dressed the twenty, the twelve foot skeleton up as. Do you think um, they'll dress him as a mom a for Mother's Day? <laughs> <laughs> Floral you could dress, be the, mother, the mother from Psycho. You could be oh. put that giant skeleton in a giant rocking chair, put a wig on it. Yeah. It's the mother from Psycho for Mother. Yeah, Day. but don't forget a face mask because that's important. Quit, quit messing around. All right, here's the uh, the legend of the Bunny Man for everybody. Are you first? I am first tonight. <laughs> And I'm excited to be first because I'm going to talk about the Fairfax Bunny Man. What? <laughs> oh, are they mad at you or are they on board? What is that? Well, I'll tell is, you. Is it creepy? It's super fucking creepy. Anything, anything about a bunny man is fucking creepy as shit. Yeah. Chatter, chatter, chatter. What's super weird is... We, I was just saying t- to somebody a couple days ago, like, don't you think rabbits are creepy? <laughs> and whoever yeah. I said it to was like, no. You know why she said no? I, I was there for this because she had a rabbit on her collar. <laughs> she was like, That's no, right. I don't think rabbits are creepy. I That's love right. them. I wouldn't be wearing them on my yeah. dress if I thought they were creepy. <laughs> Sometimes I do that where like a, I see a sentence pop up into my head. I'm like, just say it. <laughs> See what happens. It didn't seem like it was going to be offensive. I was really trying. I mean, it's just trying to relate. Listen, it's a fucking fact of your life. It's a fact it's of the um, my life. Of life. And then opposite fact in her life. Um, okay, so just so you know, the I got a lot of this information from the Washingtonian.com. Ooh. Smart, smart people. Um, just cheered. There's also a website called Only in Your State. Woo! That's dummies who didn't graduate high school. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Um, I don't know if only in your state, if they have one for every state, or if it's just for here. No, I think they do. Do they? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I thought it was only in this state. Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> so this is, part of this has been an urban legend around these parts for the past 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know this one. I'm scared. Okay. So we're starting here. Let's do it. Long ago. <laughs> Can someone start a campfire really quick? <laughs> light the, the vibe, uh, right? Yeah, light these speakers on fire. <laughs> um, long ago, there was an insane asylum in the woods. This is how you know it's an urban legend. Yeah. No one's ever built an insane asylum in the woods. Just that one Cropsy lived at. Right. And then after that, they were like, we got to stop doing this. They don't. <laughs> there's no need to put these things mm-hmm. in the woods. Yeah. There was an insane asylum okay. in the woods dividing the town of Clifton from Fairfax Station. <laughs> Guys, I looked at both of those cities on Google Maps today. They are gorgeous. <laughs> okay. But... 
the locals in both of those towns didn't like the idea of having a, having a, a whole hospital filled with the criminally insane, mm. I don't know if they were criminally insane, I just put that in, <laughs> criminally insane housed so close to their city, so they started a petition to close the asylum. They sound like great people. It's like down a little. Oh. And then... Or over? Or over. Oh, wait. Back? No, not back. There we go. Yes. Oh. Yes, back. Okay, that's creepy as fuck. <laughs> the bunny man bridge. I'm trying to set a scene of things being in the forest. Yeah. Let's not skip ahead to bunny man bridge yet. Okay, sorry. Forest. Forest. Creepy. Hate it. <clears throat> Stay out. Back in Lyme. Okay. Disease everywhere. So they closed the asylum. Oh, they did it? They did it. Oh, that's lame. Uh, in 1904, they closed the asylum and all the patients are piled into a bus no. from 1904. <laughs> <laughs> all it takes is just, if you print out an urban legend and read it aloud, you're like, no, no, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. Very unlikely. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <clears throat> So they get into a big yellow bus. Okay. A greyhound. <laughs> Mrs. Partridge is driving. And, the, uh, and uh, all the inmates are driven, the patients are driven to Lorton Prison. Great. Okay. That's, that's a prison nearby. Mm-hmm. On the way, the bus swerves and crashes. No. Of course. <laughs> and... After the crash, all the uh, all of the patients run into the forest. Most of them are caught and brought back to Lorton Prison, except one man named Douglas Griffin. So while they're searching for Douglas Griffin, the authorities find a trail of half-eaten gutted rabbits Ooh. and many more hanging from a nearby underpass tunnel <gasps> below the Fairfax Station Bridge. Ew. I probably should have brought the tunnel up now. <laughs> Somebody made this online. No! No! Oh, I didn't think it would work. I didn't know it would work as a gift. I didn't know we could do gifts. That's so awesome. That's great to know we could do Look gifts. Look at it! You're, you're scaring everyone. Too bad. That's the creepiest, that's the creepiest gift I've ever seen. Oh my god, this fucking, these live shows have now changed that I know we can do fucking now, gifts. Now that we can do fucking gifts yeah. as much as we want. I better turn that off. <laughs> that gift was made by someone named Sam Wolf Connolly. The entire website was called samwolfconnolly.com, so I got really scared that if I didn't credit this gift, it seemed like, it seems like a big deal for Sam Wolf Connolly, so I want him to get full credit. I, he seems to be great at making gifts. Cool. You can call them GIFs if you want to, but that's not what they actually no. are called. We're, we're, we were somewhere the Our other day. Our fucking agent. Our agent was like, yeah, there, we could use a GIF. And I'm like, uh, what? He did it casually as if we weren't all like, what? Like Shut he just said up. it in a sentence and then no one, and we're just like, what? I'm like, you? that's peanut butter, you nerd. <laughs> okay. okay. So then... Right? Dead hanging rabbits. What? The police. Some are crying. Some are holding each other. <laughs> if it's an urban legend, you can say whatever the fuck. Yeah. <clears throat> Mayhem. So then this, the police search the woods for Griffin for months. They can't find him. And then on Halloween night. Oh. He had a calendar in the woods and he was like, this is going to be great. That's what I was saying. <laughs> How the fuck would you know? This is going to be great. He does something on Halloween night at the stroke of midnight oh. where I was just like, what does he have it? Just an amazing digital watch yeah. back in 1904? No, he didn't. <laughs> He's standing by the sundial all day. <laughs> Come on, midnight. Um, no, sundial wouldn't help you. At, no, Okay. <laughs> It's my urban legend now. So then on Halloween night, several teens. <laughs> that phrase, that phrase is a red flag right there. Yeah, because the teens didn't exist until the 1950s. That's true. Right? That exa is exactly right. Also, anytime someone uses the phrase several teens, they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> there's two or there's five. <laughs> or there's like 30 and they're pushing a bus over. Okay. Yeah. A lot of rules. 
and then on Halloween night, several teens meet up under the bridge to hang out and party Halloween style. <laughs> Yeah, but this is, it's 1904. 1904, so what they did is they got one big piece of molasses and they broke it off <laughs> in several different pieces. Oh, fun. Eat this, Anne-Marie. Okay. That kind of shit. <laughs> They're partying. Okay. <laughs> and at the stroke of midnight... Of course. <laughs> uh, several teens are attacked by an axe-wielding man who's dressed like a rabbit. Oh, wait, no, no. So he went to a fucking costume shop, got a digital fucking watch. Sorry, I skipped ahead. He's okay. not dressed like a rabbit, sorry. <laughs> They're just attacked with an ax. Okay. <clears throat> All right. The next morning, several teens are found hanging from the bridge. Jesus. Gutted like the rabbits Douglas Griffin had left in his wake. What the fuck? And when police finally find Douglas Griffin at that tunnel... Overpass. I wrote overpass, but it would really be the underpass part. He's not on the top. Oh, no, he is on the top because he runs away from the police onto the tracks and is hit by an oncoming train. And after the train passed, they heard Douglas laughing. No. That's How, all. What? <laughs> and then it's eventually revealed that Douglas Griffin had been institutionalized for killing his entire family on Easter Sunday. <laughs> oh, okay. Just so much bullshit. We yeah. Can grow I just the most like beautiful roses. You have to pick one holiday per urban legend. Yeah, no. You know what I mean? It's an Easter murder. It's celebrated on Halloween. Right. You can't. It's how they do it do here. Both. Okay. And to this day. <clears throat> It's said that if you are at Bunny Man Bridge at midnight on Halloween night, mm -hmm. you too will meet the fate of those several teens <laughs> and innocent bunnies. Um, and now I just want to share this with you. Look oh. at that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why would anyone... <laughs> These are, I was trying to look for things, you know, different pictures on the internet, and if you put in creepy bunny or bunny killer or the bunny man, like, this comes up immediately under bunny man. Yeah, it does. They're like, here's what you're getting yourself into. You sure you want to proceed? <laughs> <laughs> Click yes or no. Click yes or no. Love Google. I just, anytime I see one of those things, I'm like, please introduce me to the person who made that mask. Because they based it on what they think faces look like. <laughs> and bunnies. And bunnies. Hate it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Um, that doesn't, that's not related. I just wanted to show you that picture. <laughs> okay, so this story first um, started getting told. It appeared in 1973 in the University of Maryland school paper. Um, the Fighting Rabbit Masks. <laughs> and... From then, it's been told and retold by several teens. <laughs> God, they will not quit it. <laughs> Guys, have you learned anything? <laughs> so, um, here's how you know it's an urban legend. It starts exactly like that scene from The Fugitive where the bus crashes and all the people oh. run off the bus. Um, also, an asylum in the forest, as we said, it just would never happen. It didn't exist. Um, no. Uh, all these things. I wrote it out. How did he know it was a stroke of midnight? Bloody blue. Okay, so there's an archivist, the Fairfax County archivist named Brian Conley, who grew up hearing this story um, and finally decided he wanted to look into it and see where it came from and what it was all about. And so um, he researched it for 10 years. Whoa. Yes. That's and an urban legend. That's too long. <laughs> <laughs> and at the stroke of midnight yeah. on... New Year's Eve. He realized he wasted a shit ton of time. <laughs> <laughs> he seems like the kind of guy who's like, I'm a researcher, but I don't want to get into like heavy shit or boring <laughs> shit. I'm just going to talk about stories people tell each other for fun. <laughs> um, so in 2002, he published what is considered the foremost paper on the Fairfax Bunny Man. And thank God he did. Nobody else had even submitted one. And they were like, <laughs> go ahead, dude. No one's competing with you. Yeah. Okay. So one of the first things he finds out is that Lorton Prison wasn't even open until 1916. So that, that 
It could have been that prison that they were driving their big yellow bus to. (laughs) Uh, there were no records of any asylum ever having been in the forest between those two cities. Well, there um, hasn't been an asylum around you. For over 25 years. <laughs> I'm just going to now start doing a foghorn leghorn impression <laughs> when I say the phrase 25 years. Uh, also, there was no records of anyone named Douglas Griffin <laughs> living in the area, and there was no bridge anywhere near the forest that lies between those two cities. I mean, so, the story is nothing without a bridge. It's really, fa- really falling apart. Yeah. Okay, so Brian Connolly um, believes uh, that the story is referring to Fairfax Station Bridge on Colchester Road, which that actually was a picture of, which was a party stop- spot for local several teens and <laughs> and also his creepy looking tunnel and at now google maps calls that bridge bunny man bridge and that's oh. it's called that there okay. it's actually officially called that now or you know at google headquarters <laughs> but here's the twist it's actually based on a true story shut the fuck up yes everybody scream so <clears throat> I'll, ch- I'll show you this. Show me something. Tell me about the thing you're gonna. Is it another bunny costume? Could it be a. Okay. No! So listen. No. Yeah. No. Apparently, uh, around 1970. 70? 70. Okay, I'm there. 70. Got it. There were two incidents in Burke, Virginia. You're cheering for yourself? You have a bunny man running around. <laughs> How dare you? An axe-wielding bunny man, you're cheering. Um, the fighting axe-wielding bunny man. Yes. That high school. Uh, so there's two incidents. The first one, on October 18th, uh, 1970, Air Force Academy cadet Robert Bennett and his fiancée, they've just come back from a football game uh, around midnight. No. A stroke. And they're, they went to his uncle's house. So they, he decides he's going to pull his car into the empty field across the street from his uncle's house. Great. And they're sitting in the car. The engine is on. Um, and uh, all of a sudden they see, I lost my spot. All of a sudden they see um, something moving outside the rear window. This is oh, on the 5400 block of Guinea Road, if anyone wants to... Double check my sources. Um, <laughs> moments later, the front passenger window is smashed, and there's a man in a white suit and long bunny ears no. standing near the broken window. Um, the man starts screaming at them about trespassing. He says, you, you're on private property. I have your tag number. And as they drive away, they find a hatchet on the car floor. Neither of them are hurt. What? Here's... Oh. I don't get it. You're not supposed to. This is out of order. Basically, later on, Bennett's, who, uh, he, he ends up getting married. It's, it's called. <laughs> What's happening? This is, this is where I'm like, and the KKK is in Burke. <laughs> Of you. No. The guy, when it happened, the guy was like, it's a guy in a white suit with long bunny ears. Mm-hmm. And the wife's like, actually, it was a Spanish capriote or whatever, however you pronounce this correctly. She's smart. She thought it was that thing. Oh. I guess you can see that being bunny ears. Okay. There's the real hatchet that they found in their car. Wow. The police gave it back to them after, after the whole thing. And they went ahead and mounted it and put it up on a wall next to their... Singing trout. <laughs> so Brian Conley actually goes and finds the Bennetts. They're, you know, obviously mm-hmm. they were dating when this happened to them. They were now they have been married for forty five years. Mm-hmm. They don't like talking about it. Yeah, let's hear it for fidelity. Um, <laughs> so nice. They don't like talking about it, but they did confirm yes, this did happen. And that's... they don't like talking about it, but they got the fucking uh, come on. That's, that's just for family. That's all they talk about all the time. That's in their secret bunny man room <laughs> off the kitchen. <laughs> Next to the trout. You have to go on. <laughs> um, uh, 
so basically, he confirms the story not only with the Bennetts, but also with um, uh, Captain Bennetts. Was, ca- was he a captain? No, a cadet. Ugh. With Robert Bennetts, um, aunt who clearly remembers the night that it happened and says that she remembers combing shards of glass out of the girlfriend's hair. Ooh, that's so, a fun image. Right? <laughs> and haunting. Mm. Where was the uncle in all this? Yeah. Whose hair was he combing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> then, two weeks after the Bennett attack, the bunny man shows up again a block away. Now, this time, it's October 29th, 1970. You see how we're, we're creeping up on Halloween? Oh, I see it there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> A private security guard uh, for a construction site named Paul Phillips spots a man on the front porch of a new unoccupied house. So he goes up. This is in Kings Park West, also on Guinea Road. Um, It's a gorgeous housing development. (laughs) So many nice porches. Um, So he comes up and he's like about to say, hey, you can't be around here, (laughs) whatever. And he sees a guy in a gray, black, and white bunny costume holding an axe. And when he begins to speak, he thinks the man's 20 years old, five foot eight, weighs around 175 pounds. Looks like a bunny. Looks exactly like a terrible, terrible rabbit. And, the, and as he starts talking to him, the man starts chopping at the porch post that's like on the side. <laughs> Holy and shit. saying, if you don't get out of here, I'm going to bust you on the head. What a dick. There's another... There's another version of the story where he says, if you don't, if you get, come any closer, I'll chop off your head, Mm. which is like the punched up version of the first (laughs) one. Busting you in the head isn't, it doesn't even seem that threatening. Well, you know Um, that thing where you like, you can't say the right thing right away and you're like, I should have said. Why did I tell him I was going to bust him in the head? Yeah. What does that even mean? It's it's meaningless. I chop off, chop off your head. I'm going to chop off your head. Next time. time. That's what I'm going to say next time. Okay, so in the weeks following these incidents, more than 50 people contact the police claiming to have seen the bunny man. Several newspapers, including the Washington Post, report that the bunny man ate (laughs) a man's runaway cat. What? Yes. He made that up. I just, I'm not laughing at a dead cat. I'm laughing at the idea that a Washington Post reported... (laughs) Had to go out. Yeah. Uh huh. Was it a tabby or a <laughs> calico? What am I doing I'm... with my life? Uh, there were actually several more Washington Post articles about the Bunny Man. One in October on October twenty second, um, the Bunny Man in, man in bunny costume sought in Fairfax. Another one on uh, Halloween, the rabbit reappears. Mm. Uh, then a week later, bunny man scene. And then uh, two days after that, bunny reports are multiplying. That's... Uh, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Someone was bored out of their mind. <laughs> In 1973, a student at the University of Maryland, College Park, named... Go the the uh you got the this. shattered windshield <laughs> <laughs> the fighting shattered windshield yeah that is a very dangerous mascot Can you imagine <laughs> you're just like the badgers and you're like what we, just we have a, to play against shattered glass <laughs> the mascot just rolled in some shattered glass <laughs> <laughs> it just kind of swings their arms at you mm-hmm. this is not regulation um <laughs> So Patricia Johnson actually submits a research paper. So this is years before um, our friend Brian Conley. And uh, it's saying that there have been 54 variations on those two incidents since they had been reported. Wow. So basically she was starting, I think, a study on urban legends and how stories like this, if you got a nugget of something good, like a man in a bunny costume with an axe, that thing is going to go, it's just going to spread and yeah. go everywhere. Yeah. Um, it's like gonorrhea. <laughs> the good kind. <laughs> that good gonorrhea. <laughs> um, so Brian Conley, in his, in his studies, he finds police reports confirming that the Fairfax County Police did look for a male in his late teens or early 20s dressed as a bunny. <laughs> um, never say rabbit, always bunny. <laughs> um, 
but they don't find anything conclusive. And in one of the police, last police reports, it said, after a very extensive investigation into this and all other cases of the same nature, it is still unsubstantiated as to whether or not there really is a white rabbit. And so to this day, no one knows who that bunny man was or what motivated him. Um, Brian Conley's theory was that there was a grumpy old man that owned that property across the mm-hmm. street from um, Bennett's uh, uncle's house. And um, that grumpy old man was very angry about all the development that had been happening in the area. Mm-hmm. He died about a year before that first event. And so Brian Conley thinks that it's a family member that basically is out there, was fighting the good fight for old grandpa or whatever. Also in the Ku Klux Klan. Perhaps, perhaps a a deep racist. (laughs) Um, But he he didn't have the right stuff with him, so he's just like, just give me that big mask. (laughs) The rabbit outfit's fine. I'm so angry. (laughs) Now here's the good news. There has been a film series called The Bunny Man. Oh. Okay. Have you seen it? Whoa. <laughs> no, I don't like this. <laughs> Can we read the video views <laughs> review? Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. Bunny Man hops onto the screen as the new horror icon. It's are you for real? Is it right there? That's horrible. It takes place in a Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> uh, no. I watched the first 11 minutes of it oh my this, God. this afternoon. Uh, it's on Amazon Prime. Please feel free to sign up. And, uh, we'll give you our password. It's a, it's a Carl Lindbergh film. Uh, and you know, um, when you're looking for a film, uh, what I recommend is that you look on, if you look on like IMDb or the cast list, and it says who played who, if none of the characters have last names, you know you're in for a treat. <laughs> Because it's like Johnny and Rachel and yeah. Digby and Tex, and you're just like, oh no, this is not, this is not going to be good. Uh, and there was, um, you know, that Carl Lindbergh loved Texas Chainsaw Massacre because the first, literally, the first eight minutes are just a series of women, bloody women, stumbling out of like abandoned houses <laughs> and like thinking they're free and then getting caught. Oh. But then it happens again to a different girl, and you're like, wait, was that other one back in time? And this is now the present, or did is this just two different girls that got loose? What the fuck? Is, whose house is that? There's yeah. no mailbox with a last name. There's no last name. It was just, it was tough to follow. And <laughs> do you mind if I just tell you about Bunny Man? Please. Um, <laughs> there's just, when it gets into like the part where you're like, okay, I, now we're, it's, there's five people driving in a car. Oh no, sorry, there were six because there was four people in the back seat of this car. You know how you do it? You know? Always. Every, if you're going to go on a road trip, you shove poor people four people really uncomfortably in the back. Mm -hmm. And then just this big truck comes and starts ramming the back of the car for no reason. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Digby, pull over. And it's just like, (laughs) who would pull over when someone's trying to kill you with a truck? That's not the thing to do. No, you drive away. And also, if it's like a big truck, you could probably get away. Yeah. I mean, it was just a Tercel, but still. (laughs) I mean, yeah. Kick two of those people out of the back seat and you're going to fly. That's <laughs> for real. Right? But you know what they do? They pull over to apologize to the truck for making him mad. And one of the guys in the back seat is like, send a girl so she can act sexy and he'll forgive us. I swear to God. Ugh. So then they send her. Oh. You can write the rest yourself. And you should. <laughs> you should. Oh, honey. <laughs> um, so... This was such a hit, this film. Yeah. That then there's Bunny Man 2. No. I didn't have time to watch it. I'm so sorry. One by one, they all fall down is their tagline. This goes a little bit... This is... Um, it's a little bit more uh, Reservoir dogs It looks you know like what I mean? it. Yeah. It does. It has the look and the yeah. feel and the bunny. And then, of course... There's Bunny Man Massacre. They didn't call it three. They called it Massacre. This is, um, there were two posters. I think this one must be the European release. (laughs) (laughs) There he's in the tunnel. 
I can only read part of the, the quote, but it says, if you, I'm going to guess it says, if you thought bunnies were soft and cuddly, think again. Yeah. I can fucking tell. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, yeah, there was Bunny Man 4. <laughs> also. Oh. How bad do you think it smelled in that head by then? <laughs> by this point? Yeah. They used the same they costume for all costume. four movies. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just, can we get some dry cleaning budget in this thing? <laughs> Gee. But whiz. here's the thing. If you have a dream, go for it. <laughs> go for it one, two, three, and four times if you need to. Yeah, that's a good message. Tell the story. Yeah. Tell the story of your heart. Uh-huh. It needs to be told. Yeah. Um, okay. Here's what I love. The town of Clifton, mm-hmm. uh, you guys, well, then you know, <laughs> have fully embraced this urban legend. Oh, cool. Because um, every year at the stroke of midnight on Halloween. No. No, they have a thing called the Clifton Haunted Trail, it, which is a Halloween thing that they do. On the website, the cliftonhauntedtrail.com, um, <laughs> It says it's scheduled for October 27th from 7 to 10 p.m. I don't know if that was 2018 or if they're so on their shit yeah, yeah. that they're already planned and completely set up for 2019. <laughs> but the website says, eight acres filled with scary skits and spooky scenes. Doubt it. You ha- No, you have to look at this website. There's some upsetting shit on there. One, one is a, it's a, it's a, rabbit costume but then the rabbit has these insane like piranha fangs oh. like if you brought a, a 12 year old there they'd have a nervous breakdown <laughs> for sure then there was a picture with like it looked like a selfie but it was all evil clowns oh, <laughs> it's just like all right everyone's into it it They're seems doing like it. um monster movies under the moon concession stand selling food drinks and other goodies please refer to the vendor page for more information <laughs> wear sturdy shoes so you walk down a trail that's one half mile long in the woods. No. And then like terrible rabbits and clowns come at you. Yeah. And snacks and food and drinks. <laughs> See vendor page. Parking is available in town and at Clifton Elementary. So you have to go park. <laughs> and then haul your ass down the trail, which I, right there I'd just be like, oh, cancel those tickets. Yeah. Can I bring a scooter? What are those scooters? <laughs> Oh, like a lark? Yeah. Or a, a get, one of those get-around ones you where know. the person goes to the Grand Canyon? Sure. I did it. Either one. Uh, a, a snappy? A razzy. A snazzy? A rascal. <laughs> we did it. We did it as a team. <laughs> no dogs allowed on the trail. Oh. You, your, your dog can't go and then just start biting the shit out of some evil <laughs> rabbit. No. If it was a good dog, it would attack. I know. And try to save you. Yes. Oh, that's cute. Uh, All proceeds benefit the town of Clifton. Let's please all go to this next year. We'll be there. I think it could be good. Really quick. There's a cryptozoologist named Lauren Coleman. uh, Has a blog called Crypto Mundo. And he also wrote wrote the book Weird Virginia. And... um, yeah, right. And in a section on the bunny man, he believes that this urban legend is in direct association with the goat man of Maryland. Yes. They were friends. <laughs> They're really good. They were in the army together. <laughs> really quick. And this is definitely for another podcast, but the goat man of Maryland, okay. just so you know. Is an axe wielding half animal, half man creature that was once a scientist who worked in the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center experimenting on goats no. until one experiment backfired and then he was mutated into a goat man okay. who roams the back roads of Beltsville, Maryland, attacking cars with an axe. <laughs> what did cars ever do to him? <laughs> That's what goats like. Cars attacking cars? Yeah. Goats. There's. They're so nuts. Whoever made that up needed to pick four of those ten items. (laughs) You know? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to end this on an up note. I would love that. Because most of this was bullshit, and I appreciate you (laughs) partying with me (laughs) for it. But there is one true horror story about the Lorton prison that is historically accurate. And it's pretty interesting. So in June of 1917, um, 1917, there's a women's suffragette movement called the Silent Sentinels. Yeah. Mother! Fucker! Do it! 
Hi. Okay. Hi, hey, ladies. So they had been um, protesting in front of the White House, uh, demanding the right to vote. And on November 15th, 1917, 1917, they were arrested and brought to Lorton Prison. Um, and that was referred to as the Night of Terror, uh, as these women were chained, beaten. One 74-year-old suffragette was stabbed with a broken end of her picketing banner. Ah. The protest leader, Lucy Burns, was shackled with her arms over her head, stripped and left freezing in a cell. Alice Paul began a hunger strike to protest the torture, so they held her down and force-fed her raw eggs through a tube that they shoved down her throat. You this said not, something about a high note that you were going to end yeah. on. Is this it? Get ready. This is insane. No. Uh, the silent sentinels were tortured for two weeks Jesus. in that prison and then released. But I guess this is a high note. The word of this abuse in this prison spread and suddenly everybody started getting really fucking into the suffragette movement. And in two years later, in 1919, women won the right to vote. And that kind of is the story of the Fairfax Money Man. Wow. We did it! Woo! <laughs> Another <laughs> terrifying, legendary story. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that there's a ton of axes in that story. I Am I right, Stephen? You just recently... Yes. Yeah, just like nodding. the axe... Axe work is all over the place. Wait, hold on one second. I can hear your dog snoring. Yes. Wait. Okay. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> That's Frank. He's done nothing all day. He's I, snoring like I feel like, like we're out of sleep over laughing at the one girl <laughs> who snore. Wait, hold on. I'm going to put Frank's paw in some warm water. <laughs> put her bra in the fridge. <laughs> Fr- freezer. Uh, okay. Okay, now we're going to do the uh, the hometown for this quilt. We're going to wrap it up. And this is the hometown that got performed in, all the way back in 2018 Whoa. in Nashville, Tennessee. We were innocent babies. We did not know what was coming. Oh, Whenever you hear of a, living. a date, do you always think, I wish I could go back and warn you? Like whenever I hear a date from 2000, I'm always like, how far was that from 9-11? Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, I wish we could all... Do something about it. No, there's nothing to be done. Yeah. Well, the government, one could say the government could have done something beforehand, but <laughs> they didn't. Why is this turned? Why is this turned? Let's not do your website right, your <laughs> truther website right now. That's for your private life. <laughs> That's my other podcast. <laughs> the 9 11 Truther podcast. That's right. Um, no, this actually is uh, a very well told hometown story. Also told with a hometown accent. Oh, God bless. Every time. It's better. It just makes it better. It just does. Um, do we have time I for a hometown? hometown murder? Okay, now wait. Everyone whose right hand is raised right now, you're disqualified. Okay, sit down. Karen has some stuff to tell you. This is really important and you have to listen. Yeah. Like you haven't been this whole time. Um, <laughs> God damn it. Listen, roommate. Uh, that's what me and my sister say. Oh. Did I tell you that story? I was on the fo- I was on the phone with my sister as she was teaching third grade because <laughs> she's been doing it for thirty years and she doesn't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> so we're like gossiping on the phone. Steven, edit just- that out if this goes live. <laughs> oh yeah, she'll be super pissed. Uh, we're talking on the phone. She's like, anyway, I was at this bar and it was super crazy. And then she goes, hold on, excuse me, room eight. <laughs> <laughs> starts very self-righteously yelling at the children up there Room like eight. how dare you and I'm like Laura we've been on the phone for 10 minutes they <laughs> deserve to do whatever they want at this I just point. picture them she hadn't given them any work to do they're all just staring at <laughs> yeah. her Miss Kilgare anything we're bored oh, okay uh, so yeah. here's the rules and the please trust us that this is the, this is over this is time tested and mother approved uh-huh. we want it it needs to be local. Nobody gives a shit about where you grew up. Nashville. Or Ten- Tennessee. 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 I think Tennessee. Tennessee. Is good. Tennessee. We care about you in this state. Um, <laughs> you can be drunk, but you can't be so drunk that you can't follow your own story. Yes. Um, Two drinks, I think, Max. Uh, for me, in my drinking days, it would have been seven, but whatever. It's like, 
It's, it's about body mass. It's about tolerance. Are you a better storyteller when you're drunk? Probably. How's your diction normally? Yeah. Um, I'm sober, and look what's happening. I mean, it's a mess. Uh, what was the other one that was really key? Um, don't. Don't. Make it... Do make it no reading. Thank you. you oh, guys right, know. right, right. Yeah. Reading's make lame. It. I feel like people yeah. know that one already. Uh, that's <clears> it. <throat> oh, everyone hates you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. You have to remember that because you got chosen, everyone else hates your guts. <laughs> so I wouldn't come up here being like, at first, I'm going to give a shout out to my buddy. And you're like, no, act like you have 30 seconds yeah. or everyone's about to kill you. Get it's them the best on your way side. to tell the story anyway. If you can win them over, you yes. fucking won. Just know you are on, par- uh, on uh, not parole. Parole. Probation. <laughs> Probation. probation. Was it probation? <laughs> um, this is a true crime podcast. <laughs> um, okay, and, and it's so, my turn yes. oh, to pick. Can I was going to say, lights we, up? yeah, lights a little bit. Um, um, I'm, I hate doing this. Uh, uh, the, uh, who are you pointing at? You? Yeah, 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 you. Okay, come on up. See, did you hear everyone go, oh. Oh. Oh, and then you need to go... Oh, behind you, there's Vince. Oh, yeah, look at Vince. Can we Every- all tell everyone... Look at him! My, he's, he's missing the Royal Rumble for this. Yes. So we appreciate it. Oh, that's Can his you Grammys. back there? Hold that up again. There's a giant eye and a giant ear. Look and listen. <laughs> Shout out to that. I hold up a giant thumb to you. <laughs> hi! Uh-huh. Oh, hi! 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 You're gonna hear today, Kelly Bale. <gasps> Kelly Bale. Well, it's Kelly Bale, everybody. Hi. Wow. Hi, y'all. And I want y'all to know that one of, one of my ex-husbands. <laughs> 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 yes. Fun. Yes. Uh huh. Actually, was he works for the prisons and was the the guy that got out? Like, no lie, he was his helper. He was actually he like said something to help get him out because he's a real doo doo head. Is he? <laughs> Just, if there's any place you can say shithead, it's here. <laughs> My ex-husband is a real shithead. Okay. <gasps> well, you did it. Way. She already got, you got them all on your side now. And... My murder is, it literally happened next door to no. where I live, yes. Whoa. Okay. This so, is good. Yes. Quir- quick question. Yes, ma'am. Is there anything we need to know about John Brown or that situation that I didn't say? Um, probably some gay stuff happened between him and my husband, ex-husband. <gasps> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. It's going off. Why would he divorce me otherwise? Right? Okay. <laughs> Got it. Yes. Okay. No, I'm just okay. kidding. Where, I'm just uh, kidding. Where where are you from? Actually, here in Nashville. Okay. Uh, I live about three, four miles away from here. So okay, great. great. And after Always party have. at your house. Your house. Yes, yeah. Yay! Come, yeah. come on, I'll cook for you. Um, <laughs> okay. So the, the story is, is that my next door neighbors, um, they had a few children, of course, and their oldest son owned a bar, and he uh, was a good guy. You know, he had some issues, but whatever. But he... Um, we all do. We all yeah, do. Yeah. But he broke up a domestic violence situation. And he was very... Um, like, he did the same thing, you know, like every... So he would come over every Saturday morning and visit with his parents. Well, the guy that he had separated the fight... And he, he didn't make a big deal out of it. He just was like, get the fuck out of here. And, you know... Yeah. And then he told her, he's like, you can stay here. We'll buy you a drink. And she's like, okay. You know, but anyway, then of course they got back together because we all know how that works. Uh, but yeah. anyway, yeah. so the guy got mad and comes over, and I'm telling y'all, these are like the nicest people in the world. Um, they, he walked, you know, we walked in and was visiting with his mother and daddy, and the guy walked in and knew that he would be there and shot him dead <gasps> in, in front of his family. Oh, uh, next door and, to your house? Next door. And I'm telling you, like these people just good people. So maybe within two years, the mother and father both died Uh. and the house is sitting empty (gasps) and it probably won't ever be rented. And then it was like a big deal because, and it happened about maybe 18 years ago, the guy got caught. uh, He like was in a car wash and like the SWAT team, like Nashville got to use their SWAT team. And it was like, (laughs) yes. Yeah, so Fuck. that's the murder next door, and so now we call it the murder house, <laughs> of because it is the murder house. Yes, it is. And How long has it been empty for? For, I would say, 
Fifth, yeah, t- since 2001, 2001, it's been empty. She lived on the other side that of the house. That is my child. That is my child. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is my child. <laughs> that is, what's her name, Kaylee Bell? Caitlin Bell. It's Caitlin <laughs> Bell, everybody. Hi. Yeah. Hi, y'all. <laughs> but thank oh, you for letting me share. Absolutely. That was amazing. That was great. <laughs> That's thank how you do it. Great job. <laughs> all right all right guys we've we've quilted it together once again we have thank you for joining us thank you for being there with spirit with us um and yeah just keep it real we're we're at the beginning of the end of the quarantine yeah we're gonna hug just, you soon just believe it we're gonna we're gonna hug you with our Ooh, there's a hawk right outside my window Ooh. just floating on the air Ew. that's good luck that's good luck is it think so i say that about everything but yes okay i think so nice yeah um i guess i should just say <laughs> frank 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 you good okay <laughs> Archie, give that dog a CPAP machine. My (laughs) God. Stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Goodbye. Goodbye. Elvis, do you want a cookie?